Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Kristen. This is her weekend travel. It is Saturday, April 9th, 2022. Today I am at Pioneer Village, Shingle Creek in Kissimmee, Florida, Osceola County. This is a recreation of one of the first towers that was built here. Shall we enter? It says it's closed. This place is pretty big. Wow. So. Oh, cool. Look at that. Little railroad tracks, water tower. So, they give you. There we go. Let's go with the wind. Those buildings that are underlined are original. So oh, the water tower is original. Wow, that's so cool. Tips and house. Okay. You are here. The par Parton, Parton house, whatever. This is an original. Wow. That's so cool. It kind of looked old inside too. It reminded me of the house I grew up in. Okay. That's original. That's so cool. Oh. And then the building directly across from it is original. We'll walk over there. Neat. Okay. Got this cool old replica of a church. So this is a replica of what the town looked like back in the 1800s. There's still some original buildings here, like the water tower, that building. And like I said, today is nothing but reenactors everywhere. So they're supposed to be in time clothing. I want to find the blacksmith. Here's another original building. It looks like we can go inside of it. Let's check it out. Look at that whole building back there. Oh, it's like a cemetery. That's cool. Complex. Wow, this place is cool. I mean, this, you know, <laughs> take this down. So this is the original home. This is not a replica. Right. This was built in Narcusi in 1884, and the Catmans came from England. Uh, here's a picture of their wedding day. Colonel Cabin and his wife. Both worked for Queen Victoria, the really? most famous world leader and monarch at that time. He was the head of her royal guard, which is like the head of our secret service, and she was lady in waiting to uh, Queen Victoria, which is like personal. What assistant. were they doing here? Well, interesting. Um, his younger brother had come down in, in like 1882. That's so cool. And kept writing letters back saying, "You got to come here. The climate's great year round. Don't have the rain all the time or cold mm -hmm. like England." And the citrus business is just now flourishing because we had just dredged all this and it became fertile. So he packed up his wife and four kids and came down here. And that's where that's they started the so citrus cool. business. That's so cool. like a now, little stove there to keep warm. And this is where they entertain their family and friends. And I always tell the school kids, can you find the entertainment system? And this place has survived 130 years. Uh, you think about all the hurricanes that have come through Central Florida, mm -hmm. but we're thinking because it's raised, the winds, you know, come under. They don't just take the whole house, and uh, it's trying to survive. And it's built with cypress, and cypress oh. is from up. Uh huh. Yeah, I've heard. I think I learned that at Gatorland. Actually, wow. <laughs> I was just there, and I learned that. I'm like, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. Or we typically only ate uh, the big meal here. You'll see the little kitchen. Uh, Where did they all sleep? Is oh, that big of a house? Th that's wow. a great question. So, Mick Cabin and his wife had four kids, three boys and a girl. Wow. Little Marjorie, the youngest, slept right here. This was her room. She got her own room. She got her own room. And there's her, you know, to freshen up. She's got her base. We still have that, yeah. like, out at camp, like, there out at our deer camp. And you still have a uh, bedpan? 
Well, we still have an outhouse. Okay, well, we, have we don't have too. electricity there and yet. <laughs> obviously, you do that at night, so you don't have to walk out to right. into a critter going to the outhouse. Exactly. And uh, this is a good pans every morning. But if you weren't rich enough to own a housekeeper, the chore of emptying the bedpans every morning fell to the youngest in the family. Oh well, yeah. So <laughs> I've been there. all the kids you say to their mom and daddy. Uh, for two reasons, it gets very hot when you cook and the threat of a fire. If you had a fire, it's contained to one building. Smart. A lot of buildings um, burn down in California, and it always starts in the kitchen. An awesome wood-burning stove from back in the day. They ordered a lot of things through their Sears catalog to come in to keep up with the modern things they could get in the 18... 80s, 1890s, early 1900s. Mm. He's the same time. Dad first, then mom, then the three boys, and then the girl. Did you imagine that little girl getting in that water? Do they they use the same water? Yes, after five people had been in it. <laughs> so they, the old the old term don't throw the baby out with the bath water. Yeah. That water was so dirty, and that little girl is in there, you know, washing her hair and everything else. I used to watch them right here. I used to see that in old movies when they talk about when they be bathing. They talk about it's Saturday night, even like from the 30s and 20s. I mean, yeah. I wonder why Saturday. Well, why Saturday? Without, yeah. without running water. Yeah. And conservative. Yeah. Now they had a pump outside that they would pump the water and bring it in. <coughs> so this is where the boys slept. Oh, this is cool. Yeah. Hey, all the comforts at home. They had three beds. Oh, they even got their own little heater. Yes, if it got cool. And, they, you know, their games, their books, their blankets, everything could be in the chest. Obviously, they hung their clothes in there as well. Had their own little armoire. Right. Nice. Yeah. And they never stuck out the store at night and did anything they should. No, no, no. Never, never, never ever. <laughs> I think it was an element of trust. You know, the parents said, you know, all right, you're on your own. We know you're going to get your homework done and whatever else you got to do. And then after that, you're on your own. Have fun. Huh. Yeah, this is cool. Yeah. I would have liked this when I was a kid, too. Have your own little pad. So you dug a hole, you put your outhouse <laughs> on top and... When it got filled up, you dug a hole next to it, you moved it over, and you just covered up the old pit, and carried on. Yep. And uh, if you had a half moon, supposedly it was for ladies only, and if you had a uh, son, it was for boys. That's what that means? Yep. I've always wondered why do they, there's always a half moon over outhouses in the movies. I've never ever seen a son before though. Yeah, is that odd? It's right, certainly in the movie, they didn't just show the half moon. Mm. This is the packing house. This is where it made its money. Oh, nice. The, this is what they would carry the fruit in from the droves on their backs, bring it in, put it up here, and it would separate by weight and size. Then they could use this old scale. If it's going to be bagged, if it's going to be boxed. And uh, Colonel Cabin was very innovative in a lot of things. One of the things he did was individually wrap each piece of fruit in wax paper. You know, those oh, saying one so bad sorry. apple spoils the whole bunch. Right. If one piece of fruit got bad, it didn't permeate to the rest of the crate. So he got very famous for, you know, taking care of his customers by really protecting the fruit. So you knew if you got a, a, a fruit from Mr. Colonel Cadman, it was going to be good. Did, did he have a distinct packing label like a lot of the... He, he did, but you know what? He sold it all. The son of it sold the Indian River, mm. which is not far from you, yeah. where you're from. Yeah. And one of the things he learned from being in England, he used to go to uh, France and Italy to the vineyards and you know they they had the same climate up there like you do in michigan in the winter time mm -hmm. and he saw smudge pots for the first time keeping the vineyards from freezing so the grapes would survive for the wine so he was the first one to bring smudge pots here for citrus really yeah and in the winter of 1894 1895 we had the coldest winter ever on record and all of his neighbors lost their entire Groves. He did not because he had these mm. smudge pots. Very smart. These, these look like kind of the, the kind of a more an earlier version of those 
gas, yeah, they put outside yeah. of restaurants when it's cold. Yeah, yeah. It's the same concept. This is kerosene and they yeah. were like, yeah. Yeah. I was wondering if these were. Yep. That's brilliant. Yeah. And there's even an older one right back there, so. Yeah, he was quite the innovator. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. And what, they were kerosene. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm glad he came to Florida. Yeah, we're very fortunate. <laughs> yeah. Became a minister. One son became an engineer, and then the middle wow. son continued with the citrus business until they finally sold it in 1940. So they're all really smart. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And his wife, uh, she grew up in England, and she had never seen segregation. So mm -hmm. she was shocked when she got here, and the kids would go to school with the white kids. So she started teaching in her barn all the African-American oh, kids. Oh, that's awesome. Seminole Indians. Yeah, she was very courageous back then to do that. But she did it in Narcusi. So uh, a lot of expats from England settled in the Narcusi area. So they brought a lot of their English traditions with them, including the Anglican church. Yeah, it's really beautiful, the shape of it. That is old schoolhouse. This is a replica now of the building. Let's head on in. Got old bell. This place is really, really cool. It's so interesting that they used to have female doors, male doors. So let's go check out the general store. It's right here, right next to us. It's cool. Everybody wants a good chamber vibe from her parents and her first brothers and sisters. Is that your Goats are because they got some goat food. Oh, 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 oh my goodness, look at the babies. Okay, they got you in a cage. I know. Sweetie. Hey. What's your name? Hey, baby. It's 
trying to think, 1892. Who are the Lanier's? The Lanier's um, was a prominent family. There were a lot of them that moved from George down here. Um, Ross Lanier is the one who eventually bought this house and lived it. And he was, when he was about 48, 49, he married Jessie. Uh, she was 16, just 16. Wow. They managed to have three kids in this house. She changed the house a little bit, but you're welcome to come up and look through it. This is, now you can tell where some of the boards have been replaced, like those are a little bit newer, but the rest of them, because it was a dog trot, most of the living was done here. Even in hot months, it's really cool. The yeah. breeze continues to go through. Because it is a nice breeze. Well, it is today. Right. right. <laughs> and of course, the, all the houses are elevated, so breeze also went under. Yeah, I noticed that. that. Well, the water table, for one thing, it kept them from kept getting water in the house. And it used it as, as a bedroom. And and then she, she changed it when she got married. <laughs> she put down rugs and things. Most of the living was still down. Just teacher keep This became their bedroom. And again, no closets. So most of their clothes were kept in trunks. Although one trunk would have held all their clothes. Sewing so machine hmm. was a gift from her family when she got married. Oh, that's nice. We couldn't find a cradle, so we assumed that they had a, we got figured out a basket. Somewhere in the 1920s, they moved, turned one of the bedrooms into an Indian kitchen. Now they were, the, the original group was gone, by then it was Maud and Tom, I think, that lived here. Because until that time, you have to be careful, you really wouldn't want a wood-burning stove in a wooden house. Oh, right. Too much danger of fire. But it would, it would have been this sparse. It would not have been, although they were lucky enough to have an indoor shelving in the heaven. <laughs> yeah, wait till you want to get on the internet and yeah. play video games. <laughs> oh, that was the laundry shed. Oh. Well, the one behind it is supposed to be a replica of the, the where they smoked the meats. Oh. But it wouldn't have been that close. We just, you know, when people, I think the Boy Scouts built this for us many years ago and we kind of just said thank you what we thought it was historically accurate there wouldn't have been a clothesline rope was necessary to use in the cattle business it was it was like gold so her laundry would have gone across the fence or bushes or whatever and i have no idea why when they put the pump in they turned it that way i was going to say why is it facing in I, I have should be facing out do you think <laughs> you just, you can I'm only just, get a tiny little bucket under there <laughs> I, I just want to say okay Okay, let's go check out the church. Mm. It smells like a church. It's so weird. Yeah, oh, it's a replica. Train Depot or the Village the Depot. Yeah, maybe you got the photos and you see them being made. Look at that. There's a photo of the train in front of the building. Wait. Doors 
open. Take a peek inside. Oh, place where you come, get your train ticket. And then stand out front, wait for your train. Old stuff. Ah, here it is. This is the area. Give me one ticket to Albuquerque. <laughs> Obviously, that wouldn't be an exact place that you could leave from here, but like that's the first place I could think of. Albuquerque. The blacksmith shop. There is a blacksmith. There's a seashell in the ground right there. That's <laughs> cool. Found, found the blacksmith shop. I don't even think there's anybody in there blacksmithing. Oops, I got it. This is cool. This is so cool. Ooh, railroad tracks seem a little bit wider. Huh, interesting. Blacksmith shop. Nobody blacksmithing today. I don't know why, but I could have sworn people actually did like blacksmith work in here for like days like this. Oh, I can't get my glasses on my head. Makeshift cemetery. I wonder where the cemetery really is at here. There's gotta be one, right? Like, but they always put the cemeteries by the churches. Logistically, it makes the most sense. After seeing the goats in the barn by themselves, I'm really sad. Okay, everybody, I really hope you enjoyed this day at the Pioneer Village. Actually, I learned a lot of stuff. I was really, really surprised that I was even going to learn anything because you learn a lot of the same stuff. I think my baseball cap is on too tight. So yeah, I've never been here before. This was the first time. So I really hope you enjoyed that. If you didn't, this has been Justin Scarf with Random Land Adventures. Just kidding, this has been Kristen with her week in travel. I'll see you all later. Bye. I also signed up to volunteer here. <laughs> I need some volunteer turn in life. I haven't done it in a while, so I thought this would be a cool place to start.